So a couple of lessons ago, we went over how to set up multi-model authentication within Adonis.js by creating two different models for each of our two different roles. We had an administrator model and a user model. Now, that came out of a user question that we had on how to go about that approach, but I personally would not recommend creating your project with that type of setup where you need two different models for two different types of roles or however many roles you might need uh, within your project and instead using just a single user model and rigging that up to your authentication system and then setting up a different role model to control whether or not that user is an administrator, a, a regular old user, or even a moderator. So today we're gonna to start fresh from a brand new project and go over that approach. So let's go ahead and create a new project by doing npm init Adonis TS app at latest. And let's call this Adonis user role authentication. We'll set this up as a web project. Hit okay on the name, I'll skip ESLint. I'll skip the Webpack Encore and let this do its thing. All right, once that succeeds, let's go ahead and CD into it and let's install the dependencies that we'll need. So let's do npm i at adonis.js lucid and at adonis.js auth. And then we'll also need phc argon2 to hash our passwords. Once that's complete, let's configure them within our project by doing node ace configure adonis.js and you wanna do lucid first. So I'm gonna be selecting Postgres, but you select whatever database driver you'll be using. And I'll take the instructions in the terminal. I'm gonna go ahead and copy this up through the DB connection, and then we'll just cut out the MySQL stuff once we plop it in there. But before we do that, let's go ahead and create our role model and migration. So let's do node ace make model, call this role, and then provide hyphen M to also create a migration for that model. Okay, once that's created, we are good to go ahead and do node ace configure Adonis JS auth. I'll be using Lucid. We'll set this up for web. The model name for this user will be user. And let's have it go ahead and create the migration for us as well. So with that out of the way, let's go ahead and jump into our text editor and let's jump into our env.ts and plop what we had earlier copied for our Lucid configuration into here. And let's get rid of everything in between there and DB connection. Okay. And then before we move on, let's set up our environment variables. So host port should be good. The user for me is Postgres. The password I believe is password. And then I have a test database I use for each of these individual lessons like this one. Next, let's go ahead and define the roles via an enum. Um, now, some people like to place their enums within their contracts. I like placing mine within app. So I'm gonna go ahead and create a new folder within app called enums and then place the roles definition within a roles.ts file. Call this enum roles. We will have a user role as one and an admin role as two. Let's go ahead and export default roles from that. And then let's jump into our database directory underneath migrations, go into roles and add a name to this table. So table string name, limit it to 50 characters and set it to not nullable. Now we're also going to want to create those two roles that we just defined the enums for after this migration runs. So we can do this dot defer. It takes an async callback that's provided to the database. And we can do await db dot table provide this dot table name to provide it the roles and then specify that we want to insert. We can do actually a multi insert to provide an array with ID set to roles. We can import our enum there, use our user key to set that to one and then name as user. And then we can do that again for our admin. So roles dot admin to set that to two name dot admin. Now, typically whenever you insert data into your database, you don't need to specify the ID, but I do want this to be strictly bound to the enum. So if my enum and database become out of sync with their ID values at any point, I want to be alerted of that via an error. So this would give me like a duplicate key error um, if I tried to get that to where I was trying to insert this as anything other than one and two. So that's why I'm providing the ID in this specific use case. Okay, so let's give that a save and then jump over to our user's migration and let's rig this up with our role. So let's do table dot integer role underscore ID, set it to unsigned since increments columns are unsigned and specify that this references ID in the table roles. Give that a save and we should be good to go ahead and run our migrations. So let's do node ace migration and you should be able to do run, but since I'm using a test database that I frequently use for multiple different lessons, I'm not 100% certain whether or not it's empty. So I'm gonna run fresh and that will just clear anything out that's in it and then run our migrations. Cool, so we should be good on that front. Next, let's go ahead and create a controller for our authentication. So let's do node ace make controller auth and let's set that up. So let's jump into app controllers auth 
And since we only have one user model that we need to work with, and we don't need to work with a separate role and admin model, uh, all that we need is this one controller, and we can just strictly use whatever the default guard is, which whenever we set up and configured authentication, we set the web. So we don't need to worry about specifying the guard. All that we need to use is the auth module directly. So we'll want public, async, and we can do register, specify this as HTTP context contract, copy that. We'll have another one for login, and then another one for log out. We'll just show all of this on a single page. So log in, log out. Log out is easiest, so we'll start with that. So all that we'll need is response so that we can redirect the user back and then auth. So all that we need to do is await auth.logout. Again, we don't need to worry about the guard that we're using on the auth module. And then return response.redirect. And then let's specifically redirect them to path whatever the home page is. And it looks like Visual Studio Code may not be picking up that auth was registered within this project. So I'm gonna go ahead and open up the command palette and just restart the TypeScript server. And after that TypeScript server reboot, it's gone ahead and picked it up. So we're good to move forward. So that should be logout, nice, easy, and done. All that we need to do is rig that route up. So let's go ahead and do const data equals await. Let's grab request response and then auth out of there. So we'll await request dot validate schema and then we will need to define that schema so let's do const user schema equals and then let's import schema and rules from at ioc adonis core validator and then we can do schema dot create we'll have an email key and we'll do schema dot string to specify that that is a required string and then for the rules for this, let's do rules.email to verify that it is an email. And then we could do rules.trim to trim that value. And then let's do password as schema.string. We'll make that required as well. And then for this, we'll do rules.min length of eight. And then for our schema down here on our validation, all that we need to do is rig that up to our user schema. So once we get back that validated data, we're good to go ahead and create our user. So await user.create provided our data. And then within our migration for our user, since we set, oh, we didn't. Um, okay, let's go ahead and alter this. So let's also set this default to roles. Let's import that enum and set this to user. So now anytime a user is inserted into our database, they'll default to being set to the user role. So let's give that a save and let's rerun our migration as well. So node ace migration and refresh, will, which will roll back and then run it again. All right, so there we go. So now this user will be set up with just the user role by default. So we don't need to worry about rigging that up either. And then since we have the actual user record, all that we need to do is await auth.login and provide it the actual user record. Once that's done, we can return response.redirect and redirect them wherever we need to. Um, for simplicity's sake in this lesson, we'll just do the home page. And then lastly, for login, we'll take the requests, response, and auth out of here as well. And let's do const email and password equals request dot only. We'll grab the email and password out of there. Then we can try await auth dot attempt, provide the email and the password. And if that succeeds, then we will continue onward. Otherwise we want to catch this. You can do something with this error if you would like. I will not be right now, so I'm just going to prefix that with an underscore. And instead, actually, let's also grab session on that. And we will set session flash errors email or password is incorrect. And then return response dot redirect them back to that form. Otherwise, we can assume that that succeeded if we don't get caught within the catch. So all that we need to do is return response dot redirect and then you can redirect them wherever applicable again for simplicity's sake we'll just do the home page here so that's it um apart from that we need to rig up the routes in the form but that is it logic wise we don't need to worry about guards it's a lot more simpler than dealing with two different models for one migration system so let's go ahead and rig up those routes so we will do route dot post slash auth slash register point that to auth controller dot register as auth dot register route dot post auth dot login auth controller dot login as auth dot login and then route dot get auth log out auth controller dot log out as auth dot log out give that a save we can head into our resources our welcome page here get rid of everything within main set up two different forms so we can do form method equals post action equals route auth dot register We'll give this a heading just so that we know what it is. Register form, set this up with an input type, email, name, email, and placeholder 
email, another input type equals password, name equals password, and placeholder of password. And lastly, a button type submit, register. Let's copy this form, change this to login, change the post to login button login and let's paste that one more time and actually let's wrap this these two forms up in an if not auth dot user and we'll put it else then we'll end our if so if the user is not logged in we will have these two forms here otherwise we'll have a link route auth logout logout and lastly before we actually test this out let's jump into our start directory underneath kernel and within our global middleware let's also register silent auth so let's import app middleware silent auth and while we're here let's also register the auth middleware so let's do auth import app middleware auth and this comes pre-configured with the adonis.js auth system and all that we need to do is register this middleware if there's any routes that we want to be restricted to just authenticated users so let's give that a save jump back to our welcome looks like i didn't save that and then let's boot up our server so npm run dev and let's open that up in our terminal and then let's do test plus user at gmail.com give them some password there and looks like that's working a-okay we can go ahead and log them out try logging them in test plus user at gmail.com so all right so that worked there next let's say that we need an admin so let's do test plus admin at gmail.com and give them a password okay so now we're logged in as what should be our administrator let's go ahead and jump into our database here go into our users table and remember our admin role is an id of two so let's switch the test admin record from an id of one to an id of two commit that change and let's go ahead and dive back into here now, before we actually try to read whether or not the user is an admin or regular user, we're going to need to jump into our model for our user and rig that up. So you can see we don't have anything within here set up to role ID. So what we'll want to do is at column public role ID as camel case, set that up as a number, scroll down and let's rig up the relationship. So let's do at belongs to role and specify that towards the role model. Public role is belongs to type of role give that a save and now we can jump back into our regular now we should have done that before we even created any users um, but i slipped my mind there so now we can do at if auth user dot and then we have that role id to reference off of so if that role id equals one we know that we have a regular user who's not an admin if it's two now we know that we have an admin so let's do at if two meaning an admin and then let's do end if so here we can do regular user auth user and let's print out their email and then we can do admin user auth user email give that a save jump back into our browser give it a refresh and here you can see we have admin user test plus admin at gmail.com just as we would expect to make sure that this is working let's log out and log in as test plus user at gmail.com log them in and you can see we have regular user test plus user at gmail.com so that's working just fine we're able to discern whether or not they're an admin or regular user next let's clean this up a little bit so it's better to not just reference the id directly we can instead provide that roles enum directly into edge here by let's do node ace make prld file for preload file and let's set this up as globals and this should really only be applicable to HTTP requests since it's specific to rendering out pages. So we can go ahead and hit that. All right, then let's go ahead and jump into that file and let's import view from at IOC Adonis core view. And now we can do view.global roles and set this up as our actual roles enum. So we can give that a save, jump back into our welcome page here. And now instead of doing two, we can do roles.admin. Give that a save, jump back into our browser, give it a refresh, and there we go. So working just fine, we can log out, verify that it works for our admin as well. And there you go, it's picking up the admin just fine. Additionally, if you wanted to simplify that check a little bit, you could go into the user model directly. So jump into the user and we could create a computed property. So let's do this above the relationship definition and let's do at computed, make sure that you're grabbing the one from Adonis Lucid ORM there. And let's do public get is admin and then return that check back so we can return this dot role id because this is the reference to the actual user record equals roles using our enum there and whether or not that's equal to the roles dot admin give that a save now we can jump back into our welcome dot edge and we don't need to reference this check at all instead we can just do auth user dot is admin give that a save 
and voila, it's still working just fine. So as you can see, this single user model works a lot better than setting up a separate model for each role that we need within our application. And it's also a lot easier to scale as well, because all that we need to do is add a record to our roles table if we should need to add one later on. No changes to our auth system at all. Whereas with the multi-model approach, in order to add an additional role to our system, we needed to go through the whole nine yards by setting up a migration, a model, setting up our auth system to work with it as well. So this system's a lot more scalable and I definitely recommend using this approach if you can.